Here is an AUNA Multimedia Integrated Amplifier Model CD708 from around 2014. AUNA is one of the cheap brands. If you are looking for hi-fi equipment, AUNA is about as cheap as it's going to get. This amplifier is a recent e-waste find. It does not work, but it's quite interesting mostly in a negative way, but there are also some positive things, which I will point out. So, before I explain the problem that this has, let's take a look around this amplifier. So, on the front we have the standby on-off switch, remote control sensor, of course I don't have the remote control, speaker selector, loudness, headphone jack, bass, treble, volume, a mid-range control, that's unusual, balance control, and the input selector for phono. Yes, this does have a phono preamplifier, CD, DVD, auxiliary, and tuner. Here is the back of the unit. There are two different brands listed on here. Auna Multimedia and Electronic Star. So they could not even be bothered to make up two different faceplates for two different brands. AC power comes in over here. There is a real hard power switch. That's a nice feature. There is the ground of phono. And over here are the audio inputs. And even though there is no tape input, there still is a record output right there. Here are the speaker connectors. Two sets of speakers can be connected. And because this device is only from 2014, everything is nice and clean. Here is the inside. Mains power comes in over here. This is not a grounded power cord, but it still is fairly substantial. That leads to this little switch mode power supply. This provides a 5 volt standby voltage and in standby mode a constant whine. This is quite a noisy switch mode power supply. That leads over here to the big switch mode power supply. Now it is kind of controversial running hi-fi equipment of switch mode power supplies. I have done my own experiments and so I can say if you get the filtering and shielding right there is no problem running hi-fi equipment of a switch mode power supply and it does have one quite significant advantage and that is you don't have the stray magnetic field of a great big power transformer coupling a 50 or 60 hertz hum into everything that's not properly shielded. The input signal comes in over here and down there is the phono preamplifier. This is based on a 4558D dual operational amplifier. Over here are the two input selector ICs. These are analog multiplexer ICs, CD4052BE. And right here we have an STC90C52RC microcontroller. This is an 8051 compatible processor and this controls the entire system. Following along the signal path, we get to this connector over here, and that takes the signal to the circuit board in the front. The tone controls are based on some more 4558D dual operational amplifiers. There is the volume control. This is a motorized potentiometer, which is quite interesting. I would not have thought that would be cheaper than an electronic volume control based on an IC in combination with a rotary encoder on the front. So that's quite an interesting design choice right there. 
Down in there, we have another analog multiplexer IC. This is a CD4053BE, and this switches in and out the loudness. The signal exits through the same connector back to over here, and then goes to the main amplifier. And this is where the problem is. Let me demonstrate. As you can clearly hear, there is a loud random noise in the left channel. And this is a problem of the main amplifier. If I unplug this connector, like so, so that the main amplifier does not have an input signal anymore, the noise remains exactly the same as it was before. So there is a problem in this main amplifier, and you can probably already tell, this is quite an interesting setup. This is made up from eight amplifier chips. They're labeled D1875, so these must be ripoffs of the LM1875 amplifier ICs. There are five pin amplifier ICs, as you can see. And the way this works, as far as I can tell, this is a parallel bridge circuit. So four amplifier ICs make up one channel, with two amplifier ICs in parallel forming a bridge circuit. The advantage is the bridge circuit doubles the output voltage, and putting two of the ICs in parallel increases the output current. More voltage and more current means more power, and putting the ICs in parallel also means that you can run lower impedance speakers. Now, the disadvantage, and I guess this is the root cause of the problem, these ICs are not really meant to be used in that way. This is quite a creative circuit, but... It's certainly not a circuit that's recommended by the manufacturer. In fact, the original data sheet for the LM1875 does not list any sort of bridge or parallel circuits. And so I think it's safe to say that something in this creative setup does not work quite right. I can certainly tell this amplifier runs extremely hot. Even with no input signal at all, the heatsink always gets up to quite a high temperature. And so I guess if you really put a load onto this amplifier, you're going to have all kinds of uh, strange effects in this circuit. Like, for example, if the ICs that are connected in parallel to each other are not correctly load balanced, one of the two ICs is always going to work harder than the other. And then you can get a thermal runaway effect where eventually one IC does all the work and the other one doesn't really do much of anything. So most likely it's because of effects like that that something went wrong and one of these ICs went bad and is now causing this obnoxious noise. I have gone through with the freeze spray, and I was in fact able to get the noise to go away twice. However, it happened rather randomly. I was not able to reproduce that behavior, so I could not narrow it down to one specific bad chip. Now, of course, I could go through and replace all of these chips, but 
That really would not be worth the effort. This is a rather cheap amplifier to begin with. Being an Auna, it's probably not going to have any resale value at all. And if I look around, I think the parts that this amplifier is made from are actually more interesting than the amplifier itself. So we do obviously have a nice big heatsink, we do have the connectors, but the most interesting part, I think, is the case. This is completely made from metal, including the faceplate. This was a bit of a surprise. And you can see this is a nice, straight, flat faceplate. So this can easily be covered up with an alternative faceplate when this whole case is reused for a new DIY project. And I think that is what's going to happen. To finish off the tour, continuing from the main amplifier, the signal goes into these speaker relays. These don't seem to have any protection capabilities. They just turn the speakers on or off. They are controlled by the microcontroller. One interesting behavior is when you're switching inputs, the speaker relays will be deactivated for a few seconds. And that's it the Auna amplifier. I'm not going to tear this apart straight away. After publishing this video, I am going to wait for about a week in case there are any interesting suggestions or questions in the comments. Thank you for watching.